So you guys may have been wondering how I got all these nice colors in my bash prompt or how I'm able to edit a really long command like this one in a Vim-like way. Well, all of this is accomplished through a configuration file called bashrc, very similarly to vimrc. It's located right in our home folder. So I'll cd to that and lsa to show you. So I got my bashrc right here. You should have this file there already, um, but if you don't, you can just go ahead and touch it and then you can go into it and make configurations just like I've been doing. So let's take a look at mine. I don't really have too much set up in here. So of course, to get those colors like I was talking about, you just have to set it here inside of the PS1 variable. You may remember this from the Gen 2 video, if you watched that, where we changed our PS1 variable. So the PS1 basically refers to this part here. It's basically your shell prompt. And of course we changed that in the Gen 2 video because we were changing root, so we wanted to be able to differentiate between a chur rooted shell and a regular shell. But you can change the colors and you can even change how you, you want this to show and what you want it to show. Um, you can show your full directory path. I personally just like to show the, um, the current folder that I'm in. So you see it doesn't show the full path to downloads, it just shows the downloads folder. Uh, you can have it show the time. Uh, I believe you can have it show the uh, IP address of the shell. So if you're used to SSHing a lot, you might want to enable that so, you, so that you can tell whether you're on a local box or whether you're on a SSH shell. Now, you can edit this directly if you want. Um, but I usually don't do that. I mean, you can see here that this PS1 variable I have is this very long string with just a bunch of obnoxious characters in it. So you can do it directly, but it's a little bit daunting. Personally, what I like to use are some uh, bash prompt generators. There's a bunch of them available online. You've got like this one here, easyprompt.net, which I think is what I actually used to create this very same PS1 variable that you're looking at. Um, there's this one, bashrcgenerator.com. So it's up to you how you want to do it. You know, you can do it the minimalist way in Vim and just write the text directly, or you can do it the bloated way and use a browser. I don't know, sometimes I think bloat can be useful. Just don't like to take the minimalism meme a little bit too far. Uh, so the next setting that I have in here is the hist size. And when you do it this way, you set hist size equal to hist file size. It enables infinite history. Now that's infinite in uh, air quotes because of course it can't really be infinite. Nothing can truly be infinite. Um, it's basically going to cache everything to a file. So I have the file uh, here, it's called bash history. So this will basically just keep a cache of all the different commands that I've run. So like I can go, I can even go into it if I want and this can be kind of useful to find um, commands, let me see, am I not, okay. This can be pretty useful to find commands if, um, say if you ran a command and you know part of the string that you use to type the command, but maybe you don't know how many commands back it was because you could just hit the up arrow key in case you didn't know to do previous commands you've entered in bash. But obviously, uh, if you don't know how many commands back it was, it's going to be harder to find. But you could just search for something, like say that there's a particular emerge that I did, and I'm just not sure what it was. I can just search for emerge and then go through them as I need to. So that's one of the other settings that I have in my Bash RC. Um, this one, as the comment says, it allows you to CD into a directory merely by typing the directory name. So this is a setting that I copied from, I copied this from someone else's uh, Bash RC. I don't remember who, it might've been Luke Smith's. Um, but, and you'll do the same thing with your Vim RCs and Bash RCs. Mine are 
somewhat my own, but also a collection of other people's that I found on the internet. Um, but yeah, it, this is really cool. So you see I'm in my home folder here. If I want to go into downloads, I don't actually have to type CD downloads. I can simply just type downloads and it'll tell you up here that it's basically automatically doing that command for you. So it's pretty neat, even though I don't use it all the time. I'm just uh, so used to typing CD to change directories that it's basically muscle memory at this point. But it's, it's cool when I remember that I have that feature. Uh, so this one, set OVI, this is actually the command that allows you to essentially enter a Vim mode from your bash console. So uh, let's see, where was that really long command that I had? Um, whatever, I can't find it, but I'm in the normal bash RC, the normal bash prompt, and I can arrow back and forth. So this is just how any bash is going to be. But if I hit escape, you're gonna see that it goes back one, just like if you were in insert mode, and then you hit escape and vim. And now I'm typing the H and L keys, and you see that I can go back and forth between this. I can even do uh, W to go forward words back. I can do dollar sign to go to the end, zero to go back to the front. So this is obviously really great if you've ever had to type a really long, um, command into bash, especially uh, something where you have to copy and paste a bunch of stuff. Like if you're doing, um, sometimes I'll be deleting multiple files. And so I'll just do like rmrf this file and then the double uh, ampersand rmrf this file, so on and so forth. Well, you can also yank and paste uh, just like you would in a Vim configuration. You can even hit V to actually open up a real Vim window and then edit it. And then when you're done, you can just right quit and then it'll basically enter it at the prompt. Now, obviously it didn't do anything because I just typed in a bunch of nonsense, uh, but you get the picture. If you're actually typing a real command, there's a Vim mode that will allow you to edit that command really easily. So if you make a mistake, or like I said, you just need to put a really long command, you could do it a lot easier. Um, this file here, uh, alias RC. So alias RC actually contains a bunch of different aliases for other commands. So uh, for example, one that I will do sometimes is make a directory. But instead of typing out, like I can do MK, I've oh, got to go back into insert mode. Like I can do MK DIR test. So you see that I have this test directory here, but let me go ahead and remove it. Uh, RM RF test. I can also create it just with MKD. And you'll see the same thing that it did um, earlier with the other alias command, the uh, CD command. It tells us mkdir created directory test and it is indeed there. So I have this other file, uh, alias rc, it's in my config, oh, let's bim config alias rc. So I have a bunch of these different ones. Um, so I've got one for YouTube download. So if you wanted to download a YouTube video, if you have YouTube DL installed, we can just go to like, I don't know, my YouTube channel, download something. Do, do, do. Let's do this one. So instead of typing the whole, um, YouTube DL command, we could just do YT, bam. And then it's gonna go ahead and download it with YouTube DL. So that's another cool thing, especially for that because YouTube DL is obviously a much longer command that you would have to type. And LS colors, so what this does is this defines different colors for different file types. So you can see that we're following the same type of syntax using our um, asterisk. So it's 
like an asterisk.jpg, so any type of JPEG, or uh, asterisk.png, so any type of PNG, and it will define it as these different numbers which stand for different colors. So that's another thing you can do to uh, just go ahead and set it. And there's also uh, prompt generators online that you can use to set this as well, so you don't necessarily have to go through and get all of those color numbers manually. And then you just export it so that you can actually enable it. So those are some of the settings that I have in my Bash RC. Feel free to copy them if you want, or you can use those different Bash generators to make your own prompt. Hope you guys learned something.